Good morning. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> what a beautiful day. It's so good. That's perfect. Thank you, brother. Thank you, pastor. It is a beautiful morning when we worship together like that in the Lord. It really is. I want to jump in quickly. I want to say a couple of things if I can um, by way of housekeeping. Don't forget our PAC conference. I know we're kind of pushing that, but that's very important. What happened? What? <laughs> did, we, did we mute this side over here? What y'all do? Y'all just fell off. I wish y'all could just stand up here sometimes and just see what I see. Don't forget our PAC conference because it's important. It's not just a push to try to gather people. Remember, we're investing in ourselves. There's a lot of great things happening, a lot of events. So please coordinate yourself with that. Make sure that you're a part of it. I think they're going to have some uh, uh, video, or not video, but screens up probably later after the service with calling the office. I'm trying to meet with everybody. Please be patient. Please be patient. There are many of you and one of me. Be patient for the schedule. But I do want to just sit down with anybody that wants to just sit down uh, and talk to get to know you a little bit better. See if we can do anything to help elevate your life. That's the purpose of it. Um, so we can do about 30 minutes. So if you're able to do that, you want to do that, you'd allow me to do that, then please call the office. And we're just kind of opening my schedule every couple of weeks. Um, so th th that way we can kind of keep control of it and make sure that I meet with people. So just want to do that to say hi, love on you, find out, uh, again, how we can help elevate your life. That's what this is about. Is there something we can do? That's our job as leadership, to serve, see if we can help get you to another place, another level, another strength in God. Yes and amen. And then we're doing um, sometime September, I think 22nd, we're doing after service, we're doing a Life Leaders Lab. Oh, that's cute. Look at that. A Life Leaders Lab, those are designed as labs because we get a lot of theory. That's Sunday, September 22nd. Uh, I have Darren Collins, who is my business partner, a very dear friend of mine, um, will be here. And all that is about is, is going through some things to help us grow and understand finance and wealth. So we have some really good things. We do that in a lot of places, um, and there's a lot of demand for that. But this is home, and if it doesn't work at home, it doesn't work anywhere. So it's important to me that we get this and that we're growing and understanding. So it will be a fun time. I think we're having lunch. Yeah, that's the $10 for the lunch. So make sure that if you're able to do that, we're just going to spend a couple of hours after service on that Sunday. We'll go downstairs and we'll work on some things. Is that okay? Okay. Um, Genesis 16, I just wanted to make sure you're aware of both of those. Genesis 16, I'm going to jump in because I know I'm in the right place this morning. I know that I am. I know that I am. All right, this word is for you because I'm in the right place. Are you ready for it? You ready for it? I did my part. I studied, got a good night's sleep. Drank some water this morning, took a cold shower, didn't cold plunge, just cold shower, two cups of coffee, any more than that, we'd be here till three in the afternoon, prayed, devoted myself to the Lord, so now it's on you, right, because he'll use anybody, even a donkey, so I'm just the, I'm just the servant this morning, so your heart's ready, you're prepared, all right, let's get it on. Genesis 16, I'm going to read this whole passage because I want to familiarize all of us. Some of us may be more familiar than others, but it certainly bears repeating. But I want to take a moment and just read this passage so that we'll all together have this story so that we can kind of extract from this what I believe the Lord is saying to us this morning. So if you would, position yourself. If you have your Bibles, I think we can put it on screen. Genesis 16, they're just now hearing about it because that's how I roll last minute, you know, up in here. Don't know what I'm going to do. I said I was ready. Genesis 16. It's going to be one of those days. Genesis 16. We're going to start in verse 1. Boom, look at that. That's how they roll in the department. See, our department's on it. Genesis 16, number 1. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, 
had been born him no children. Now remember, Abram becomes Abraham and Sarai becomes Sarah. Later on, there's a name change, but right now we're still dealing with them as Abram and Sarai. And no children had been born to them, but she had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. So she said to Abram, the Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Stop. Don't read anymore. Look at me. Let's just make sure we're on the same page. God had come to Abram and Sarah, Sarah and said, hey, you're going to have a child. They're much older. That's a very hard promise to receive because they're older. Physically, that was very, very difficult. And so God had promised to them, and like most of us, when we're waiting on the Lord, it becomes easy to help God help us. I'm good at helping God help me. Doesn't always turn out the way that I want it to. But that's human nature. That's what we do. So we can't look at them in Scripture and fault them because we are the same way. So what they're doing is going, listen, God has not given me any children. We have this promise. I'm going to help God with the promise. We know this. And so they're, they're setting down and building a strategy of how God's plan can work in their life. It's not as far out as we make it sound. We make it sound like, you know, Ishmael's the mistake, it goes around. But it's what we do when we go, I I know the promise, because you have to be careful in in the the balance of things, but, but waiting sometimes feels like doing nothing. And we're not supposed to just do nothing. We're supposed to do something. We got to, even waiting on the Lord is, is the word braiding where we're, we're putting things together. We're doing stuff. So sometimes we have this capacity as human beings to help God help us syndrome. And that's what they're doing. They're going, all right, God gave us a promise and it didn't come in this way. So I'm going to find another way for that promise to come. So she said, I, I've got, hey, so this is not, this is not what we would see in our cultural thing today. That'd be, I mean, not that, not that this was the right way to do it, but this was about lineage. You gotta have a, you gotta have a son. We gotta have, we have to keep on going here. So they're figuring out how to do this. She said, let's use Hagar. A- Abraham agreed to what Sarah said. He'd been married long enough. He knew. So after Abraham had been living in Canaan 10 years, Sarai took her, Egyptian slave Hagar gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar and she conceived. When she knew she was pregnant, I need you to catch this phrase right here so when I bring it up a little later, you'll remember. Okay? When she knew she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. Remember that? Underline that? Highlight that? Whatever you need to do. And then Sarai said to Abraham, you're responsible for the wrong I'm suffering. No, I'm not going to touch that. I put my slave in your arms, and now that she knows she is pregnant, she despises me. May the Lord judge between you and me. Your slave is in your hands, Abram said. You do with her whatever you think best. And then Sarai mistreated Hagar, so she fled from her. Hagar fled from her. Verse 7, the angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was the spring that is beside the road to Shur. (laughs) That would preach right there all by itself, wouldn't it? You can be in the middle of nowhere and God has a road to sure. Uh, Felt a little something on that. And he said, Hagar, slave of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? (laughs) He's addressing her, by the way, this is just, this is just funny side notes, how my mind works. You see this because you ever been in a place you don't know where you're going or where you're coming from or where you've been? Like you just don't know, it's your, you're just all twisted up. No, y'all ain't, never, never mind, wrong crowd. He said, what, what, what are you doing? Where are you going? What's going on? She said, I'm, going, I'm running away from my mistress, Sarah, she answered. Verse 9, the angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. I need you to underline that because you're not going to believe me later on when I tell you some stuff. Go on and underline it, highlight it, write it down. The angel of the Lord... <laughs> I'm running away from my mistress. And the angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress mistress, and submit to her. That can't be God. The angel added, I will increase your descendants so that much that you, they too will be numerous, too numerous to count. The angel of the Lord also said to her, you're now pregnant. You'll give birth to a son. You shall name him Ishmael for the Lord has heard of your misery. He will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone and everyone's hand against him. And he will live in hostility towards all his brothers. She gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. 
Now, he told her all that information. I can assure you, like most of us, she didn't hear that. She was excited she was going to have a son. She knew she was pregnant. She didn't know she was going to have a son. In those days, obviously, it was very important to keep the lineage to have a son. So she's excited. She's not hearing all the challenges she's going to have with Ishmael. She's just excited. She gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. She gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. She gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. I'm about to tell you a name that you still use today from a little slave woman running away from a problem hidden in the desert. She gave a name that you still call on God today by. I came to talk dignified today. But I might have to preach. She says, she says, you are the God who sees me. Elroy, Elroy, R-O-I, L, not, not return on your investment. Roy, R-O-I, Roy in the Hebrew. The God who sees me. Mm. The one who sees me. That is why I will call him Bir Lahai Roy. Now that just means he sees me at the well. She was at the well. He said, this is the one who's living who sees me at the well. But, but the, the name that we still use for the God who sees me, that's one of the Hebrew names, is El Roy. He sees me. It is still there between Kadesh and Bered. And Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abraham gave him the name Ishmael to the son she had born. Abraham was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael. Father, help us today at the reading of your word. Open our hearts and our minds to hear everything that you have. Even through my stammering lips, Lord, I pray that you would bless our hearts, that we receive the truth that you have for us as your people, to strengthen us. So that we may manifest the reign of Jesus Christ in our hearts and in the places in which you have put us. We thank you for it. We receive it with gladness. We believe it with faith in the name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. I need every person to say this whether you think it's cool or not or it's dumb. I need you to say it. I need you to say it out loud. I need you to say it physically. I need you to say it in in a voice that you can hear it with your own self. Don't worry about your neighbor. God sees me. Say it again, please. God sees me. Doesn't matter whether you believe it, what do you think? I just need, all I want to do right now is put a seed in your heart that I'm going to water over the next few minutes. Because this is probably one of the most important things that we need to understand in our walk with God. God sees me. That seed's in our heart, now we need to water it with his word. And here's a woman that's on the run. From challenges and problems. I want to say a couple of things to get to to, to this phrase this morning. And I don't know how long I'll be. Maybe 15 minutes, maybe an hour, two hours. But here we are. And she's on the run. She's running from her problems. (laughs) And the angel comes to her and says, hey, go back to what you were running from. Now, we probably never heard that because if the angel said it, we wouldn't hear it that way. Because that ain't God. That's their dysfunction. They're messed up. They're crazy. That that crazy couple asked me to do something, and now they're manifesting crazy. That's on them. You need to help. I, I pray for Abraham and Sarah and their dysfunctional marriage, Lord. Help them. Don't, act, don't look at me like church people today. You know, doggone good and well, that's how we'd be praying. They are crazy. I don't need to be in that mess. I'm the handmaiden of the Lord. Blessed and highly favored. You gave me child. I don't need to go back into that mess, God. I need to stay away from it. And the angel said, stop running And go back to what you were running from. You cannot run from uncomfortable things in your life. You cannot run from uncomfortable things in your life. I'm destroying some of our Christian theology. 
that thinks we're supposed to always be blessed and highly favored and never have any problems and challenges. And it seeps into our thinking so that when we have a problem or a challenge or in a place of discomfort, we want to run from it. We gather the prayer team. The devil's against me. We find ourselves in this challenge, in this place of discomfort. We don't have a theology that allows us to function in discomfort. But if you don't learn to embrace discomfort in your life, you're not going to have the fulfilled life that God has for you. I know I'm preaching this in the right church because any other church probably run me out. Y'all love me just enough to tolerate me for a moment because we don't like these messages. No, 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 no. I'm going to get out of this. That's why we love, that's why the enemy's good at getting us in in the old if-then treadmill. Because if I can get it together and get this done, then I'll be blessed. Because I can't be blessed right now. The if-then, the if-then treadmill that he puts us on is always I got to get out of this to get that. Once I finish school, things will get better. Once I get out of this challenge, it'll get better. Once I get a better job, a better house, a better mate, fill in the blank. That is Christianity in the American culture today. If I can just get out of my challenge and my problem, then God's going to use me and bless me. The problem is God's right in the middle of it. And he said, no, I want you to stop running from the discomfort and be still and let me develop something in you that can only be developed in your discomfort. God did not call you to a life of comfort. We misread scripture. He comforts the afflicted. Yep. But he didn't say he's taking you away from it. And that's a whole different game. He didn't say I'll airlift you out of your discomfort. Knock off the dust. Fan you and feed you grapes. And backhand the person that dare come against my child of God. He didn't call you to a life of comfort. He called you to a life of purpose and power, to a life that has significance, but not comfort. We have to break this mindset and this theology that we think we're always supposed to be in a good place and never have a challenge. But you cannot grow. You cannot run from things in your life. Let me say it this way, since I'm going to be talking strong today. You cannot respect yourself if you keep running and quitting. From every problem that shows up on your doorstep. I'm not telling you that there's not times that you don't run from certain things. Especially sin. People get that confused. When when, when Potiphar's wife shows up, you run. But most people don't call that discomfort. (laughs) There's things you run from. But God puts you in a place of discomfort. And you cannot respect yourself if you're constantly running and quitting every time there's a hardship. Did you know, here's a good good one for us to, to get a hold of. Because we, we, this is a term that we have terrible in the church. You ever heard of backsliding? That's a confusing term in the church. But you know what backsliding is? Backsliding is quitting. Do you know where the term comes from? It's actually the word sitting down. So when a donkey would carry a load... And carry the burden, sometimes in their stubbornness, help me now, Lord. He would stop and sit down. See my back? See how that's slidden down? That's where that term's come from, the 
the, the backslidden of the donkey, which the, the burden would slide off. That's where that term comes from. It means sitting down on your purpose. Your purpose was to carry the burden of the Lord with strength. But somewhere when we stop, we quit and we sit down, we backslide. It's not just moving away from God. It's not being at, at, at a place at odds with God. It's stopping and sitting down so that you're not fulfilling your purpose. We cannot respect ourselves when we sit down, when we quit, when things get tough. I brought my own amens, by the way. If y'all want to throw some out, it's okay. But I'm just saying. When we, when we get to a place where things are difficult, they're challenging and they're hard and I can't wait through it. I don't know what to do. It causes us to sit down. It creates a disease I call almost an itis. I almost got there. I almost finished this. I almost made it. Problem is you do that enough in your life and it becomes easier and easier to sit down. And the angel of the Lord comes to her and he said, I need you to go back to what you're running from. I need you to go back to the discomfort, to the challenge in your life. And somewhere in there, Hagar found a, a, a joy, a happiness. Do you know why it's called a sacrifice of praise? Now, listen, y'all. It's easy right here when people are singing. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and everything that's within me. I got to be silly to keep your attention. Listen. It's another thing. Back over here on the dark side of a mountain with a heavy burden. You feel all alone and ostracized. Nobody sees you. Nobody knows the trouble. That's when it gets easy to put your head down and slump your back and sit down. Nobody knows. The trouble I've seen, oh Lord, heavy is the burden. Don't act like it's real, nobody will know it's you. Every single human being hearing this message in a thousand years from now, should the Lord tarry, has been and will be in this place. It's called a sacrifice of praise because it ain't easy. Got nobody on the keyboard, nobody keep me on the right notes, don't have somebody singing behind, beside me that's happy and cheering for me. I'm all alone back here. But it's in that place that the Lord said, that's what I want. I want the sacrifice of faith that even though you can't see it, even though you're tired, even though you're weary, even though nobody sees you and you feel all alone to give me the praise that is due my name. And she started praising him because she had a revelation that even though nobody else may see me in my challenge, you can stand in the middle of a coliseum of 10,000 people praising God and feel alone. That nobody sees me. Nobody knows what I'm walking through. Nobody knows the hardship that I'm going through. But if you get a revelation, which I pray you get today, 
that though nobody else may know and nobody else may see me and I may look a little foolish to you, I'm just happy that the God I serve looked down and sees me in my time of trial and hardship and difficult. So if don't nobody else praise him, I'm going to go ahead and give him praise because he sees me in my difficult challenges and times. And even though I don't do it all right, I'm still going to lift my voice and offer the sacrifice sacrifice of praise that he's worthy of. You may feel alone. You may feel ostracized. You may feel like I'm guilty. I'm in the middle of the biggest fight of my life and can't get no help. Abraham don't see me. Sarah don't see me. Mom don't see me. Dad don't see me. My sister don't see me. My brother don't see me. My pastor don't see me. Oh, Lord, dear, the great apostle didn't see me. Oh, God, I'm out here all alone by myself. And I'm on the run. But you know when God sees you, what he's telling you is, I'm reminding you of your purpose. I'm reminding you of your significance. I'm reminding you that I have you right where you need to be. (laughs) Thank you, sir. Thank you. Just need one. That's my intro. It really was. Are y'all laughing? <laughs> here's, here's what I want us to get to, though. Because y'all done heard all that before. Y'all church people. That's what we do. Y'all heard all that. But here's the challenge. Here's where the enemy gets us. This, this woman, you read it. I made you mark it. I made you look at it. Despise Sarah. Is that true? Very plan she agreed to and said, okay. Not like I have a choice, but all right, whatever. Agrees to it and then conceives child and despises. The very person that she agreed with. Now, but somebody say, well, well, she, she, she may not agreed with it. She may not have had a lot of choice, but guess what? She ran away. She could have done that before. So somewhere she said, I'll I'll agree with this at some level. Wrong right, I agree with this. So she was in on the plan at some level, right? Or she could have ran then. She could have said, no, that ain't right. I'm going to run. I'm going to run. But she conceives and then treats Sarai with contempt, despises her. The reason that's important because we read this story and we make her the victim. That's important because when I'm over here on the backside of the desert and I feel like a victim, oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. I feel justified. I can sing woe is me with such beautiful conviction. It's so hard, Lord. They did me wrong. Nobody knows, Lord. And it's easy to be in this place when you feel like somebody done me wrong. That's an easy song. Somebody done me wrong. But they didn't do her wrong. She's on the backside of that desert from her own actions, her own mistakes. That's a different place to be, beloved. That's a completely different place to be when you're sitting on the backside of the desert because you messed up. This is your mistake. You agreed to the plans and they went sideways and you didn't like the outcome, changed your mind, got mad, and ran. Easy.
see, when you go, man, they did me wrong. I ain't done nothing at work. And they won't promote me. They against me. That's how we talk. That's how we talk when we talk to the Lord, just like that. Your voice gets a little higher, a little squeaky. Lord, you don't know. They, they, they did me wrong. I've been there every day, showed up on time. I've been, I've been given. I've done everything right. They did me wrong. But see, it's a different thing when you, when, when you know that it was your actions. And now you're on the backside of the desert. See, that's the place the enemy gets you. That's where the enemy gets That's where the enemy, I've watched him take out people like that. Trust me. I've watched him take out stronger people than me than that. Yeah, but I screwed it up. See, that, that was harder to deal with. I, I, I messed it up. She went back there because somebody done her wrong. That's how we read this through the years. We read it as though, oh man, doggone, she got a raw deal. No, 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 no. No, that's why God showed up. <laughs> it's easy to cry out when we feel like there's injustice done to us. But when it's my actions that bring me there, when I make a mistake, nobody's harder on you than you. Everybody else, that, look, it's okay, man, let's get back. No, you don't know, I, I blew it. And that's what takes us out so often. And the problem is that we, we, we've, we've lost two generations of people because of this, this you deserve it syndrome that the enemy hands out. We've lost two generations. Two generations of people. It wasn't somebody did me wrong. That's easy. It was I screwed up. And I couldn't find any provision. And God's mad at me. Because I didn't get it right. There's not any more message probably more important than we need to hear in the Christian church than this one. Here's a woman on the backside dealing with these issues and challenges because of her own mistakes and failures. We've lost two generations of people because of the, you deserve this. You don't know what I did. My lifestyle led me here. My bad choices led me here. And that's a hard one mentally to get past. We struggle with it. Some of us may have the discipline to keep going to church and doing the right things, but we still have that mindset. And you know what it does? You know what the danger of it is? It begins to diminish God. Makes it, it begins to make him punitive. Now he sent Jesus because he's mad at us. He was mad at us, so he had to send Jesus. That ain't why he sent Jesus. He sent Jesus because he loves us. Not because he's mad at us. But the longer you sit in that, the more punitive you can make God without knowing it. It was her fault she got in this mess. Did you hear me? <laughs> it was her fault. If you can catch this, if you can catch this, it might save your life, it might save a generation. If we can get this, if we can get this, we, we, we can turn some things around. Because what happens, what happens when I think it's my fault is I have justification to run. There's a generation, two generations really, that are on the run. I would probably disagree with you if you say, well, they're, they're mad at God. I don't think they're mad at God. I think they feel like they disappointed God. And we didn't have a theology to help them through it. So they're on the run from God. Please catch what I'm about to say this morning, please. In all my 
theatrical drama. I, I need you to catch this. It's, it's, it's very important for us as we interact. Because this is where God's called us. That's why we're here. And what happens is you have a generation that has run. Because that's what you do when you feel like there's discomfort and it's your fault. Is you run. So what we call backslidden, I would, I would argue, we don't have to get into theology. You'd be wrong anyway. What we've called backslidden is, is somebody turning their back on God. That's not what backslidden is. I just told you the definition. It's when you sit down. The donkey's, the donkey's remember, is backslidden. It's at an angle. You were carrying something, and somehow you thought you made a mistake, and it was your fault, and you sat down on the Lord. So we've had a generation that has sat down. They're not against God. I would argue that. There's always people against God. But there's also a backslidden two, two generations of people that are running. Now watch. They're running from God because, because they're backslidden. They've lost their, they lost their burden. They lost what God's called them to do. I want you to catch this one phrase. One phrase. And then we can pray. The problem with running is there's no provision. In the running. <laughs> There's no provision in the running. <laughs> Y'all hold on a minute. This is, this is not part of the thing. I just got to get a drink of water. I don't even know whose water that is. I'm about to drink this. Watch this. I don't care. Lord, protect me. How's that for theatrics? Listen to me. Listen to me. There's no provision in the run. We've made this more difficult than it needs to be. You cannot pray over the top of a principle. You cannot violate a principle and pray over the top of it. You must, you must understand the principles of God. And the principles of God are easy. My provision is in my assignment. And you cannot stop me, and you cannot hinder me, and you cannot hurt me as long as I'm in my assignment and I keep walking. Stop, stop. I ain't talking about me, I'm talking about us. I ain't talking about you and anointed somebody. I ain't talking about bishop, prophet, pastor, teacher. I'm talking about believers. And when you're in your assignment, the place that God said, that's where I want you to walk. All you have to do is walk in that and your provision is already there. Do you want me to say it the way Jesus said it so it's easier for you? Seek first the kingdom. That's your assignment. That's what the kingdom is. Your kingdom is the assignment that he gave you. That's where you manifest his kingdom on the earth. It's as easy as going, my assignment is in this place right here. This is where I advance the kingdom. And if I seek that first, all the things are already there. They're assigned. Listen to me, this will blow your mind if you get it. Every dollar, everything you're ever going to make, everything you're ever going to do is already assigned. It's already done. You don't have to fight people. You don't even have to invent anything unless it's in your assignment. But what we do is leave our assignment and get religious. Oh God, please give me provision. Please help me, God. Please, I need help, God. With great fervor and tears. And we, we, we have such passion and we mean it. And to a generation that doesn't understand the reason your prayers are not being answered is not because God's mad at you. God's not mad at you. He loves you more than you can fathom. I don't care where you're at today. Backslidden as you can get. 
You can head down right to the worst place in Atlanta from here and he's going to be right there beside you. You don't like that theology, read your Bible. I'm telling you, you don't outrun God. You don't outrun his love. But what happens is we get out of our assignment and we get, oh God, gather around, pray. And God goes, that's beautiful. That's wonderful. But that's not how this works. There is prayer, but that's not the purpose of it. All I need you to do, there's no provision in the running. You running outside of where I've assigned you, I didn't put provision there. The reason I didn't get provision is because you're supposed to get hungry. God help me today. Prodigal son, you're supposed to get hungry. Father ain't mad at you. He wasn't never mad at you, prodigal son. Somewhere, though, you sit down and go, this praying and all this stuff ain't working. I'm hungry. God goes, good, that's the purpose of it. Now I can drive you right back into your assignment. And in your assignment, there's provision. Man, I, I, are we okay for a minute? Three of y'all. <laughs> it don't matter. I got to finish this. Do you know why we don't feel spiritual enough sometimes? You know why you don't feel spiritual enough sometimes? Don't, you don't have to, like, don't answer like that because you, you, you got to act spiritual. It's the person next to you, right? We, oh, no, I... The reason we don't feel spiritual, like our prayers get answered, is because we're outside of our assignment. Because inside of our assignment is where things work. Now, the, 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 the challenge, the reality of this, we all understand, it's not as easy to stay in this as we, we would like it to be. I wish I could stand up here and tell you that, yep, you just walk along and stroll and bebop and you never. But no, sometimes in chasing things, making mistakes, doing stuff, we get outside of it. It doesn't mean we're not going to heaven. It doesn't mean God doesn't love us. I'm not talking about heaven or hell. I love God with all my heart, but I've been outside my assignment. It's lonely, it's cold, it's hard, it's difficult. And I don't feel very spiritual. I don't feel like I got it. Everybody else has got it. Everybody else got this great relationship with God, but not me. I struggle. I can't pay attention. I forget stuff. It's hard sometimes to do things. And God goes, that, that's because you're running and there's no provision outside of that. You get back to your assignment. Man, it's sweet. It's the sweet spot. So if you have people that love God, but they're far away from him and they're praying and they're trying to get God to come to them and God goes, I'm with you. I'm with you everywhere. But I need you to get back to your assignment. I need you to find the purpose, the place that I made you for. You just got out of place. That's why it was tough. That's why it's hard. But, but backsliding just means no provision. That's what that means. And it's not that it's it's not that God doesn't show himself in that because. It's, it's, in the, it's in those hard times that you find out that God's your provider. That's, that's what happened to Jacob. He was in a tough spot. He had a, he had a knife over his son when he found Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh. He said, he's my provider. He'll provide for me. But you have to understand that what happens when we step out. And listen, here's, here's what I want you to hear this morning. I don't know if I got all the way to it. All of us in our walk with God sometimes in trying to please the Lord and trying to help God, which it's our nature. We want to. I want to make it easy for him, my father. And in doing that, we can step outside of our assignment. Again, we're not talking about God's mad at me. I'm going to hell. But I'm outside my assignment. And here's the incredible thing. I'm sitting in 
my church and my family. And I can assure you that there's a bunch of us out of our assignment. Doesn't mean we wasn't in it. Doesn't mean we don't know. It just means sometimes we step out. And I apologize because my weakness in life is I'm raw and real sometimes. So I got, I, 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 I'm getting better. But I just don't like when we do all the churchy stuff that covers over things and neither do you. And by that I mean we learn how to put phrases over stuff. We just, we just, we act like sometimes that by doing that it'll get better. And sometimes you just got to be raw and real and go, this stinks. Right now I'm in the desert. But some of you are in a desert season because you're, you're, you're finding, you're trying to find your assignment. But you know the part, this, this, this is going to get me. I'm telling you, this breaks me down every time. Here's the crazy thing. If you've ever been, and you have been, and I have been, in a place where you're outside your assignment, and the angel of the Lord comes to you, and he goes, hey, I, I know you're here because you made a mistake. I know you did this on your own. But guess what? God sees you. He sees you. You didn't leave God. Just because you're not in your assignment, God sees you. And if he sees you, he's reminding you how important you are. He's reminding you that your purpose is still here. He's reminding you your assignment hasn't left. He's reminding you it's not too late. He's reminding you that it's okay. It's okay. I'm still going to bless you. I love you. I love you with all my heart. I'm about to get some fresh water, y'all. Thank you, brother. It may be too late already. I don't know. <laughs> I got to be here next Sunday. Y'all be like, what happened? Is he gone? Is it? Did we lose him? Thank you, brother. Listen, you get on the backside, you may feel invisible. You may feel invisible. You may feel like, man, I love God with all my heart. But there's this disconnect, and I just, I, I, I feel like I'm all alone. And all of that was to tell you, God sees you. God sees you. That's, that's extremely important because listen, we get really good at talking about God and I know God and I know lots of things. I can give you the Hebrew, I'll give you the Greek. Here's the Latin phrase. Here's the church fathers. Here's church history. I heard this phrase growing up in church. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. And those, I love all that. Don't get me wrong. But sometimes... I don't feel like I'm seen by God. I know he loves me. I know he loves me. I know I'm on my way to heaven. Jesus loves me and this I know. For the Bible tells me so. But sometimes I just don't feel like I'm being seen. But God sees you. God sees you. God sees you. God sees you. See, I need that just to land in your heart so that when you're all alone and you're in those challenges, you can go, I know you see me, Lord. And you say, yes, I do. Yes, I do. She didn't find the Lord. The angel of the Lord found her. That's an important distinction. We, we, we say that in the church. We know what we mean, but that's, that's not theologically correct I found Jesus well he wasn't never lost he ain't never been lost we know what we mean but it's a good reminder I didn't find the Lord he always had me I became aware of him but he was always there even when I couldn't track him and I didn't know even when I didn't believe in him he was still there stand with me and I, 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 I'd be I'd be remiss 
this, this, is, this is a little longer today, and I appreciate your, your, your patience, your tenacity. But I don't think there's probably anything more important in our lives than, than, than our assignment, because that's where our anointing and our provision is. And I just think it's important to understand sometimes that we can all sit down, we can all run from things when we, we feel that. And sometimes it's the pressure and the discomfort that makes us run. And I've been in places and I can look back over my life that I stepped away from. I didn't, I love the Lord, but I stepped away from my assignment because of the hardship and the challenge. And I thought, well, this is easy. I, I can flow better over here. <clears throat> You can until that, until that grace that the, the older brother, the, the prodigal son, until you spend that. That's what that is, by the way. You can step away and you still got that grace on you until you spend it all. Then you're going to find corn shucks in your hand rather than steaks or fish or whatever you eat. And if you're here this morning, you're here by design. If you're watching by way of the internet, it's not by accident. if you're here and you say, man, I, I feel that. I feel that. I'm going to be real honest with myself and true. I feel like I have been in a place where I haven't been seen. The purpose of this message is God's using a donkey, me, to come tell you, I see you. Don't make that my message. Make that the word of the Lord. Because that's what our faith is. I see you. That requires us a response. So if you're here and you say, I, I felt that. I want you to just move down here like we do. Just, just come down to the front so that we can pray. Maybe you feel like I haven't been in my assignment. I love the Lord with all my heart. Love the Lord with all my heart. He's my everything. But I haven't been in my assignment. I haven't been in my assigned place. I haven't been in that place where I know I need to be. You might be here and feel like my wife hasn't seen me, my husband's hadn't seen me, my boss had nobody seen me. The person I love the most hasn't seen me. I've been in some places in my life that I felt like I was all alone. They felt lonely and cold on the backside of the desert. It was discomfortable, uncomfortable, walking discomfort. And part of that, part of that is learning how to walk in those things and let God be God. That's part of it. But there's also the portion where you go, Lord, I know you see me. And if you want to translate that to what I want to pray today it would be this I recognize you I got you child I got you you ain't outran my grace you didn't mess up that bad listen to me I know there's sloppy agape and things go too far but listen to me you don't have enough mistakes in you to get away from God Some of you need to hear that. You ain't got that many mess ups in you. Yeah, but I've screwed up a bunch. You don't know. I'm a real screw up. You don't have that many in you to outrun his grace and his provision. And I need you to hear in your spirit from the Father. That's what he does, right? I want you to I want you to really, really hear this morning. He brings that down and says, I need a human voice. Right now, I'm going to choose this one right here. The Father from heaven says, I see you. I recognize you. I'm going to take every single thing that you've walked through. He didn't say he'd make it comfortable. He 
didn't say he'd make it easy. He said, but I will use it. So if it wasn't, even if it wasn't God sent, it will always be God used. And no matter what you're walking through, no matter how far out you feel, how lonely, how invisible you feel. That's the word I feel right now. Invisible. I feel invisible. Everybody, hey, hey, but I feel invisible. You need to hear your father's voice. I see you. I see you. I see you. Son, daughter, I see you. I recognize you. You're not lost. I've got you. I've made provision. Your blessings are beyond what you can count. They're more numerous than the stars, more numerous than the sand. You don't know what I've done for you and what I have planned. Don't be afraid of the hardship. Just know that I see you. Close your eyes just for a moment. All that does is keep us from getting distracted. Just close your eyes for a minute. Just, just let him work for a minute. Just That's all. Just be still. Just let him do his procedure. when we run from things and we step outside of trying to whatever reason trying to help God running from something one of the hardest things that you'll ever do in your life is to go back into something that you felt like was difficult for you please hear me 
Sarah, Sarai, because Hagar despised her first, then despised Hagar. If you've ever been despised or shunned or put into a place, when we talked about this a couple weeks ago, where there's, where there's the wrong value put on you, wrong stuff, you're just this. Sarah despised her. So you can imagine then when the Lord comes to her and goes, hey, listen, I see you. I'm trying to make this real today so that we, we can carry this. I see you. The Lord said, I see you. I got you. But some of you are going to have to go back into some hardship. Mm. Oh, no, don't like that word. Listen to me. Sarah was not an easy boss. Can you imagine if you're Hagar and you get the word of the Lord, you're standing at the life center and the Lord says, I see you. And you go, oh man, that's awesome. Thank you, God. I, I, I receive it. I believe it by faith. Now, I'm going to send you back into some things that are difficult. Can you imagine... See, we don't get this. We don't, we don't put this illustration in there. Hagar shows back up. Who is it? It's me. Who's me? Hagar. Hagar? What, what you bring your scraggly tail back here for? I don't want nothing to do with you. I done told you to get out of here before. I'm sorry. Could you imagine how difficult that is? three of you can because the rest of us don't want to do that <laughs> sometimes our assignment is not as fun as we'd like it to be but how many of you recognize our assignment was in that household I'm not telling you it's going to be easy and roses what I'm telling you is that God's anointed you for he sees you and when the Lord sees you and recognizes you you can walk back in Say, hey, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Some beds need to be made up. Some dishes need to be washed. See, I ain't not a one of y'all like that message right there. Not a one of y'all got excited about that right there. I ain't about to go back and... And I'm not telling you to go anywhere. I'm just saying that the Spirit of the Lord is going to direct us through some challenges. Because there's some things that I know that we got to walk through that God said, this ain't about them. This about you. And I got you, baby. I see you and I'm with you always. But you got to get back in that assignment. And you got to walk this thing. And you got to let me be God. And you got to let me do what I do. Because there's provision in the assignment. There's no provision in the running. Now lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray strength. Gird our loins. Gird our mind. Give us the fortitude to walk in our assignment even when it's challenging. Give us the strength to stay, to occupy and not run. We know you're taking us into occupy for a purpose and a reason. It's not by accident that you're speaking this word to us. Because sometimes it's easy to step out when it's hard. But give us the strength because it's in the Occupy. It's in that place that we take the ground. It's in that place that we move forward. It's in that place that we advance your kingdom. It's in that place that your abundant provision is for us and our household and those around us. So we choose today under the anointing of the Lord to walk back into our assignment to walk boldly and strong to let you move and have your being in us I know that you see us Lord you see us today you see me today Lord I am significant and I am important and I count I am significant I want you to say it with me I am significant I am important I count you see me I have a purpose you have a plan for me. I'm walking in it. In the name of Jesus, by faith, I receive it. Amen and amen. Now let's clap strong. Come on. I don't know 
this is more of a guy thing or not. So I don't know if it's going to translate all the way. But guys do this sometimes where we like, I see you, man. I see you. Is that just guys do that? We're kind of dumb that way. I don't know. We do it all the time. Be like, where's Pastor Derek at? We do it all the time. I see you. I see you, bro. Which is our way of going, I recognize you. I see you, man. I got you. But as silly as that is, that's what I want you to do this week. I want you to stop, look around, because the Lord's going, I see you. I see you. I got you. I recognize you. I'm with you. I see you. I see you. Everybody else may not. You may be invisible. But listen, I can be invisible to you as long as God sees me, right? As long as God sees me, I'm good. I'd rather God see me than the whole world. As long as he sees me, and I know he sees me, and he recognizes, I'm good. So on your way back, so we remind each other, because we, we're just going to preach to each other a little bit as you make your way back to your seat. I just want you to go, I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. Just, just tell somebody on your way back to your seat, right? I see you. I see you. That's just remind. I see you. I see you. Just reminding ourselves that God sees us. I see you. 